now we go ahead and dig under the skin of testimony and i'm sure there's like a lot to talk about with this record because even the even the name of the album is just like testimony and most of the songs on the album have like a correlating um audio sample from like a distorted vocal of like some preacher or some shit which i really liked and it's really the reason i added um, your album to the Ignite the Church playlist on my Spotify because woo, that's so cool. Um, but also it's like it it's yeah. mainly slamming deathcore, but it definitely has those black and like anti-church elements when you add those vocal samples in, right? Or at least that's just my own personal opinion. So starting off, right? You pick up testimony. Imagine it's a book in a library, and you're like, "Wow, the album cover looks pretty sick. What is with this emblem? Why is it there three times? Why is there a Baphomet and a whole bunch of people in cloaks just hanging out in a very, very dark, almost like cavernous space?" And then you turn it around. You see the back of the book summary as you would with your average book, like like this, right? So, what would be a good back of the book summary for what testimony? is compared to um the human solicism and any other standalone single that heirs of humanity has put out so far mm, that's a good question i would say a dark and ominous look into the heirs of humanity oh the most branding branding <laughs> most intense fucked up brutal chaotic things that's ever happened throughout human existence that people and humans have done to one another whether it be through political acts or taking advantage of authority or religion or just being a bad person and wanting to being a bad putty tat <laughs> a bad person wanting to inflict just like your nonsense onto other people right so it's it's really of course like the testimony part it really i think works with the the audio samples that are provided because it's obviously some evangelical toxic as fuck preacher just like just like oh we were chosen by god ah and you know like spewing out his bullshit because people like that definitely still do exist and they exist everywhere here in the country and it makes me want to gag but whatever because re freedom of religious uh, beliefs and stuff like that um but testimony when i think of that and provided the context i'm like okay so this album really is a testimony to the darkest elements and the darkest lyrical material that heirs of humanity has provided thus far as well as a testimony to how bad the heirs of humanity can go in the world that we know today 100 percent Bing bong. <laughs> so starting off because we have the track list, this yeah, album. I'm glad um, you interpreted. It. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. I do. I'm like I do that weird deep dive shit. That's that's my job, more or less. I'm just like trying to bait you guys into being like, uh, uh, because like plenty of bands have kind of had that moment before, and you know, it's it's it's. <laughs> I hate to say it, but it's kind of entertaining sometimes. But it's also like. It's good to challenge perspective and see like how deep um, an artist, a musician will be willing to go. But quick shout out to your Spotify page in which currently you guys have 2,642 2, monthly listeners. Congratulations on that. I don't even have, I think, 10 for Blind Without Our Failures yet. But yet again, we've only released one song. No visualizers, no nothing for it. Hopefully that'll be changing soon. But going back to errors of humanity um, <clears throat> with testimony, with the with the track listing right incorporated and provided via spotify the first track would be prelude and that's if i remember correctly usually an intro song that's just introducing you to the album right and that's usually just providing an audio sample. But if I remember correctly from yesterday, <laughs> um, there is quite a bit of musical content, even with just a prelude. So let's go ahead and start with prelude. What's going on here, lyrically speaking? There is no lyrics for the first 45 seconds. Aha! Uh -huh. Yes, I was correct. Oh. And I didn't look to the fucking <laughs> right and see that it was only 31 seconds long. Okay, so we're skipping that. 
Track two, the persecution. What is going on here? <laughs> That's how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> that one is um, similar to Honor Killing. It's kind of like a continuation of Honor Killing is a continuation of the persecution, which Honor Killing is the next one. But it's kind of about just like the Salem witch trials and just like how back then, how fucked up it was, is like. Even nowadays, just like you don't need necessarily any proof or any just like anything like that. They could back in the day could just be like that lady did something crazy. Like she's a witch. Yeah, stoned to death. She challenged science. Science, I tell you. She so said that, the Earth was at the center of the universe. No, the Sun was at the center of the universe. How preposterous! Burn her alive. Kill her. Kill the whole family. Literally. God, I would have. I would, <laughs> burn your witch <laughs> yeah seriously it, it it's i look back and it's it's one of the main reasons i'm not western monotheist you know what i mean of course i respect everybody i know who is involved in that but i'm like look back on history man <laughs> like salem witch trials all in the name of god we shall burn this woman she is a spot of satan she's collaborating with the devil <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> think about that. it's like how back in the day someone could just say, that lady did something I don't agree with. She's a witch. And you just like, it's okay to publicly murder them. Just think of that. Right. That would yeah. be fucking insane. So, well, I mean, tactically, it still does happen, just not with women. And it happens in sundown cities, which those are very silenced stories. But very painful to acknowledge that those still exist which i don't know if you guys are familiar with the lore if you've heard of like any sundown cities in wisconsin but basically um sundown cities are the isolated spaces in the united states where the kkk and religious extremists evangelical extremists um still reside and basically they call it a sundown city because when the sun goes down all um all poc right people of color based laws and like regulations like hey you can't lynch people anymore like why the fuck would you need to do that these people don't care and once the sun goes down these uh these small towns these small communities free reign they can do whatever they want and there are probably still lynchings happening so technically that toxic culture that error of humanity per se um still resides here in the united states it's just a lot more quiet because it's like, well, if the masses at large, right, knew about those, well, we'd probably be hunting down and burning those cities to the ground or something very similar. Because, well, no, none of us want lynchings to be happening anymore or even something very similar. Like, that could be happening, man. People, women could still be <laughs> burned at the stake for understanding their multiplication tables. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's really, it's disgusting to think about. But after all, it is an era of humanity. So with the persecution and honor killing more or less in mind, talking about the Salem Witch Trials, we have track four, The Perilous Horde. Derek Connolly of Niffle. What's going on here? So there, there's this song lyrically will never be. It's very personal to me. And oh, I feel like right. 
and this is the one song ever and i feel like in our ever existence of a band that there won't be lyrics for anywhere and no one unless you can want to break them down and understand them then you can go from there but yes. that's the one song that i won't like if you want to take the time to break it down not you person but just like if anyone yeah. listens to you and you're like you want to know what's going on you listen to that break it down and then we can like then, then let's like discuss it but that's one that like if you look on spotify anywhere like i'm not gonna have like that's the one song probably that won't have like any lyrical content to yes it. Right, no lyrical it's explanation. Very violent and intense, for sure. Right, naturally. Okay, cool. And it's I about will. Kieran's erectile dysfunction. He does this. <laughs> breaking news. Breaking, Bra news. breaking news headline. Breaking news. I'm just kidding. No, that's that sounds brutal. So that's mean, Dane. That's mean. <laughs> Be nice to your bandmates, man. That's that's my role in the band is when people are trying to Saints be troll. when people are trying to be authentic and open up, I just have to immediately make it humorous and destroy any type of you know, authentic human emotional connection and just slather with irony and Well Dane's still seventeen, so yeah. <laughs> he still has like that. He's still got that growing up to do. You know what I mean? Oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, dude, if you if you told me that straight up, I would absolutely believe it. Like, not gonna lie. Last but... or last year, we joked that he couldn't drive because he didn't have his temps. <laughs> He's got his temps. I'm 23 years old. I oh, oh, we're the same age then. Okay, cool. Um. Okay, so with track five being like that's that's a first for the podcast for sure. But nonetheless, I have no intention of like you know kind of pushing and shoving. Just like what is he talking about? Because that would just be fucking stupid. That would be um inconsiderate. So oh, it's track just like five. To just get into it. Get into that. Yeah, yeah. Like if it's that personal to you, absolutely. Um, but track five, we have counting the coups. <laughs> Which happens to be like one of my favorite songs off of this record, without a doubt. What's going on here lyrically? Um, so when so James Hunt, he's the original vocalist in the band. Him and I kind of collaborated collaborated mm -hmm. on the lyrics. So a lot of the stuff we were just throwing ideas back and forth, but kept the same idea of errors every man who just fucked up shit. Um Writing that song, we were, like, doing deep dives on just, like, the most crazy stuff that just ever happened, like, in multiple cultures, tribes all over the world. We found just, like, very interesting topics on just, like, the Mayans and the Incas and the Aztecs and when they, when they would go to war and the things that they would do and, like, them literally preparing for battle. Just, like, it was just insane, so we just kind of just kept that vibe throughout that song just okay like going to battle killing your enemies and scalping them right that's yeah. always fun just writing about yeah they would scalp them they would wear their hair just like just crazy stuff just like yeah. really insane take selfies with them yeah because they had iphones back then Dane. <laughs> <laughs> um that's my favorite song to play on the drums Ooh. yeah that makes sense that, that, i remember that being an ass beater for sure mm -hmm. and when i think of counting the coups too i kind of think my first impression lyrically speaking despite not knowing any context like oh i don't know that's why we're here that's why i'm asking you um but counting the coups the first impression i got was like like you mentioned um kind of going throughout history and going through all these major conflicts all these major wars um the word coup right coup d'etat um, or like may, any of the major uh, <clears throat> mutinies, right, in history throughout society and throughout these major countries, empires, societies, whatever. That's kind of the first thing I thought of. I'm like, okay, so, I mean, coups are pretty fucked up to the victim, but usually a coup happens because um, there's a tyrannic ruler 
there's someone abusing their power and the people have had enough. So they take the power within their own hands. And ultimately, by the end of the day, they could have the person that they committed the coup to, um, the person that they dethroned, committed a mutiny upon. Um, they could be facing a guillotine. So I guess ultimately that was that was my only question lyrically with that is um, if there are any references to like any major mutinies or stuff like that, that could be fucked up in perspective to the victim but not like specifically no like no. that's something we just don't i remember we were sending links be like history channel and national geographic <laughs> these most like articles these articles like youtube clips are just like the crazy horrendous things i'm just going between yeah wars between these people and that's just literally what we just focused on on that song specifically cool yeah in that case, we have track six, which is Civil Unrest. This one like feels pretty close to what I was theorizing before, but obviously I'll allow the lyricist to confirm or deny the lyrical context. Civil unrest. That one is blatantly just about just government tyranny. Mm. Just like they have control of a lot of stuff, whether it be media, news articles, social media. There's just a lot of things that get swept under the rug there's a lot of things that are brought into the light that aren't nearly as important as things that need to be talked about right um, all day and every day um, yeah and just pushing whatever necessarily not a false one or not uh, one that you should or shouldn't believe just like pushing whatever agenda they want to at the time just putting it out there and and that ultimately causing into one rest taking authority and abusing it right yeah and and um let's see there was a couple quotes by a couple people and um <laughs> funny enough because i'm a star wars nerd um in the clone wars a specific show that's like very very close to me it's been with me since my childhood it's the reason i made certain friends um but like there's there's some good shit in there and there's a quote by one of the characters um, I don't know how familiar you guys are with Star Wars lore, which is I so know funny. About Star Wars lore. You you know about Star Wars lore? Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah! So Kid Fisto in that show during one of the first initial episodes, um, as far as like the uploading sequence, but not chronologically speaking, um, he says like those with power should refrain from using it. Like that's kind of stuck with me for a long time. It was like a very subtle build up to that, but and like that's that shit. You really think about that sometimes, and you think about that with most of um, today's modern societies and the various countries around the world, because if you give enough people power, I wholeheartedly believe, and this is personally, I don't mind saying this, this is why I'm kind of 13, 12 myself, um, I, it's like you give anybody enough power, enough authority over others. And eventually the potential is there for them to abuse it. And that's, of course, a what-if scenario, right? And you can't base the future off of what-ifs. But ultimately, 90% of the time, there's a reason 1312 is a thing. Not only here, but also in the UK. Um, and probably with most police forces around the world. But, like, yeah, in general, you give someone enough power, they they might end up abusing it. And that's, that's what really sucks about um, <laughs> democratic society or democracies, right? is we have this illusion, right, that we have the option to elect and vote in these people. But at the end of the day, there's a massive roadmap for who's going to be in power, who's going to have certain opportunities at the top of the world. And most of the time, anybody who has enough power, they just like, you know, they kind of become feral, right? So just keeping that in mind, that's kind of like my, um, that's kind of like my thoughts and opinions towards that general topic. Number seven, track seven, we have probably one of my favorite song names on this album, A Display of Imminent Destruction. <laughs> Like, 
there there's something going on there. What's going on? I fucking love that song. That's my favorite song off the album, hands down. Um, it's exactly what it sounds like, a display of imminent destruction everywhere and anywhere. And when you hear that song, that's just like what I want you to feel and hear is just like chaos and carnage everywhere. And when you hear that shit live, that's like exactly what the, that's what the fuck you see. That's right. exactly what you see. So that's just straight to the point. Um, Are there any like a major events in history that you think of when you when you were like writing that song, perhaps, or were you just like, yeah, this is gonna be fucking brutal? I think that one was based off the guitarist that I was just writing. We wanted to write something just like fast because I was going through a lot of shit. Like, yeah, in that little three month span where I was recording a couple of the songs from the album or coming up with the ideas, so it was just like very violent and brutal. So I think we just kept the Maybe for that song, maybe I guess why I like it so much. We kept the entire vibe of the entire album in that song, just like everything all in one, whether it be people abusing power, whether it be whatever. Just yeah. whatever. put anger and aggression into that and just lyrically and just putting it all out there. Just violence, just Yeah. I don't know how to put it. I just violence. Yeah. It's just violence. Know. Yeah. Sometimes you just gotta be violent to be violent. Yeah. Kind of comes with being a, a metalhead in a metal band. Lyrically speaking, musically speaking, not in real life. Don't don't go beating up people okay, for no reason. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 But like, that's the emotion that I want you to feel. Like sometimes yeah. I think makes a good like deathcore song is like, if the skies were to turn red and the gates of hell just were to start arising from the concrete and just like rise up. Like what, what just music would be played behind that? Yeah. And that's just what I wanted. Right. Exactly. And that's completely understandable. It is part of the Arctic after all. Um, track eight, we have imperceptive servitude. What is this? What is this about? That's pretty much the same thing when it comes to people just taking their opinion and whether it be personal, whether it be a job or in real life, you're at the store, people just randomly putting their thoughts and opinions on you, whether it could be help you, but just unwanted attention and like people bringing their unnecessary stuff into your life like, right I, there's this we have a farmer's market here and i like to go to it sometimes and there's just people that like will hand like get a little too in your face and want to hand out flyers and just like <laughs> but it's like pushing some religious thing or it's pushing yeah some random thing that whether someone cares about it or not just like people are their own people and let them be their own people. I understand you're trying to reach out, but I guess do it in other ways. Or if it's yeah. easy, things will just come together, not just you like, maybe that sounds wrong of me. I don't know, but just like overstepping, I guess the boundaries and wanting to, I guess, dilute someone's life with your own like vision on how you think. Yeah. No, I, I do. No matter again, work, personal life, relationships. Yeah. Anything. And the thing is, too, with, like, the song title in mind, because there's actually quite a bit going on with, like, the the grammar, right, provided with this track. So, in perceptive servitude, um, when I went with the context in mind, and I, I don't know why I just end up doing this with all the bands I host on the podcast. So, you have imperceptive, which is kind of, like, oblivious, right? Or, like, maybe inconsiderate, insensitive, no social walls, no social boundaries whatsoever, but they're providing a servitude, a devotion to that type of character without realizing it, which is also imperceptive in and of itself. So that's that's actually a really intelligent song name for that. I think that works really, really well. 
And it definitely, even just the name itself, it's always fun for me as a lyricist myself when you have to even take a look at the song title and you're just like, it's actually very intelligently structured. Like, what does that specifically mean? It challenges thought, which is really good. I think it's really healthy for anybody who's willing to deep dive into lyrical work. So <clears throat> track nine, we have Tower of Human Skulls featuring Dylan James Hare of Dead Awake. <laughs> The absolute homie, the first member, the first and only member we've had so far from Dead Awake on the Anatomy Crosscast pretty recently, actually. Really cool guy. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the lyrical content of this song, if there is any that just that kind of helps um, separate it from the other tracks on the album. That's again about um, tribes back in the day. Um, back in the day, like it was 2010. <laughs> <laughs> Like the 16 and 17 hundreds, I think it was, um, just certain tribes when they would just go to war with random tribes. And my dad did one of those ancestry DNA D things. Like we found a war from Nigeria and just Cameroon. Um, right. So I was just looking up the Yoruba tribe where we're from, Yoruba tribe in Africa, where my dad's lineage is from. And um, like when they would go to war and just with other stuff, just like, for intimidation they would just stack towers of human skulls and that's again they would scout them as well and just do horrendous things and just like having that visual and just like intensity into a song is what we put and just like the strategic things that they would do to go to intimidate their enemy or when they would prepare to go to war like their rituals anything that they did just pretty much lay it out there and just talk about it and when it comes to like specific acts that were to happen like towers of human skulls like when we have the breakdown in that song specifically towards those words and lyrics in that part of the song at the end like very intense like build up and then just intimidation just like big nuts in your face <laughs> <laughs> that song live is fun too so I think also whether people feel the lyrics or music in general, like they feel any like emotion to it too. And when you see yeah. us live, I think we bring a very like, we're a trio and we've kind of been running on that, but we like have, I think we have a pretty good like stage presence and sound. We bring a lot of emotion to it too and try to get yeah. to feel what we're feeling. For right. Sure. No, it's always great. And I dare have to ask, like, I kind of have a good assumption of why he ended up being the future, but why did you guys decide to choose Dylan James Hair of Dead Awake for this track? Because I love that guy so much. <laughs> he's literally, like, one of my best friends ever. I've known him for years. And he's literally, again, the reason I knew him before any of the music stuff. And he's the reason I started this band. And when I was in Madison at Tyler's Place, Tyler lives in Madison, so I was recording in Madison the vocals for the album. Dylan lives in Madison, so he was just chilling at the studio while I was recording vocals. I'm like, yo, you want to hop on this part? He's like, fuck it. So we did that in like 30 minutes, and the lyrics were already written. We just went through it, and it ended up sounding pretty cool. We ended up shooting a video, and we played a show with Dead Awake, and it was a hometown show, so it was pretty easy to pack that out and sell it out, so we were able to loop him into the video too. So it all works perfectly. And we yeah. love all the dead awake guys. So just anytime we can work with them, we're happy to them. So I mean, obviously we will. Fuck yeah, dude. That's awesome. And shout out again to Dylan James Hare. And I hope to uh, interview the rest of dead awake here in the near future as they are making some new steps in their roadmap, um, preparing to sign to a label. I don't know which label yet. So, I mean, I guess it's a good thing. I don't, um, and then, you know, <laughs> they're planning to um to get an EP or album put together with their, you know, the, as their debut effort under that new label. I'm just like super curious on which label they are going to jump on. But I guess, again, that's that's it's good that I'm curious and I don't know. Um, But track 10, 
to wrap up testimony, we have the freaking title track featuring my little brother, bro, Devin Duarte of Worm Shepherd, formerly of Devin to Embers. <laughs> Um, so we kind of went over this whole album and really, like you said, like we confirmed, it is actually just a testimony to how intense, how evil, how heinous eras of humanity throughout history have become and have been. So when we go into the title track itself, is it just that, is it just the back of the book summary or like, was there a certain reason that you chose testimony as the name of this song, as well as the rest of the record. Um, let's go ahead and dive into it. Instrumentally, when I wrote the guitar part or the guitars for testimony, like the song, it was, I wanted it to sound like a send off. Like this is the last, this is the last hurrah. Like when that first chord hits, it's like, this might be the last song of the album. Like it sounds like it's ending kind of thing. Yeah. Kind of what the vibe we were going towards. And yeah, it was a whole emotionally, again, instrumentally wrap up of the album, like saddening send off. Just like, this is the shit that. Happened. Farewell for now, my friends. Yeah. Until soon. Tyler's... <laughs> but, uh, uh, but lyrically, this one's definitely geared more towards religion. Just like, I've had people in my life too and friends just like had lived their life on how they should be as a person and how they felt internally. And just like seeing even parents that people that grew up that I known like for a long time, just like every aspect of my life, just like have different opinions on people based on just like who they are as a person and based on only because what someone says in a book, like you've known right. this person your whole life and all of a sudden like, they think a certain way or feel a certain way like right you, like it that is just crazy to me so i think that's a lot what that was geared towards too um and if also a big thing i harped on lyrically in that one too is like if we keep this up like humanity is destined for failure like she's just like not gonna end well so yeah seriously um, you just, you have to learn from like history repeats itself unfortunately but you just especially like the shit that's going on now just with everyday life but just, like, gotta pay attention to that shit and, like you can learn from that and i just try to like sit back and listen and observe and yeah take and stuff so you can do that in real life too and change who you are as a person or i guess like feel a certain way or act accordingly to make things better and not be like how things have been in the past on the entire rest of the album yeah no seriously and um of course me being me i have to ask um what was the decision behind devin duarte featuring on this title track to wrap up the album so we were only expecting two features on this album and we had what? we had derek and devin already in mind right but I can still hear you. We were like, okay. We had a couple other people in mind too. We we're like, okay, who's gonna fit the? Because we didn't write it to a specific person to want to be that person in that part. Yeah. Like, we like wrote a part, and then it was like, okay, what person would sound good behind this? And James and Derek, like, they have like an internet friendship. So I'm pretty sure that they're pretty close. So we got. A hook up on him doing a feature and he's just a everyone knows like if you heard the guy he's just brutal like it's yeah you listen to the song you listen to any of nithful it's just like hard so that was yes. no question and he brought a lot of like emotion to that part too just like big nuts same thing with Devin. just like <laughs> i think 
testimony and gem testimony in the intro to the persecution were definitely like songs like I was big into Worm Shepherd at the time and just like kind of fitting that vibe or just like that like blackened like ending vibe. Um, and I think he just that we left it open. There's not much going on. There's just a lot of China, maybe a snare and just a lot of like open guitar string hitting and just like let Devin do his thing and just kill it. And then with DJ, it was just the same situation where, or the situation I said where we were just, we only had two features. They were done. We were in the, uh, we were in the studio recording the vocals for the album. And then he was just chilling at the studio. I'm like, yeah, we're going to hop on this song. And it just worked out perfectly. So, Okay, so shout out to everybody who featured on this record as they are people we've also hosted on the podcast before. So this album feels like very, very, um, it feels very connected with the podcast and just like what we've been doing. The reason I've been working my ass off when I can for the last uh, two or three years now, which is insane. Um, but absolutely fantastic record. We'll go ahead and future me. That's where the under the skin session ends. So end it here.